Hey guys, it's Cassie and today we are going to be going through the seven biggest, and a bonus, bag trends of 2023. I did a video on the biggest fashion trends of 2023, I'll have that linked below if you haven't already seen it, but we need a dedicated one on the bags, I will also follow up with one on the shoes as well. You know I like to keep you one step ahead of the game, I don't want any curveballs coming for you, I want you to be prepared for what you're going to be seeing in 2023. So kicking it off with Luxury bag trend number one, businessy box bags. Okay, so fully embracing office chic here. Um, these are bags that basically you look at them and you know she means business. She's getting that contract signed. She's getting the deal finalised. She That sale is going through. Whatever job this woman's doing, she's doing it well. And how can we tell that? Simply from the bag. So boxy in terms of not only the shape, but a lot of these tend to be done in that box smooth leather. The Prada Re-Edition 1995 bag is a very good example of this. Very box shaping, very sort of stereotypically work appropriate looking, available in a few sizes. This is something that's already been released, but you can see through the amount of them on Prada Spring Summer 2023 runway, their commitment to this style in particular. Or if you don't want something that looks too, too officey with this style, then you can do this bag, but in a fun colour that sort of, you know, oh, a little bit of a spanner in the works. Following up with a brand like Miu Miu, who is doing a similar thing, but in a more casual way. So the bags that we've seen on their spring summer 2022 runway are, again, that sort of boxy shape, or they've done it a little bit more rectangular, two little top handles, but the leather is softer, which gives a little bit more of a casual edge. But they do also have another style in this collection that's definitely a bit more prim and proper. Very sort of one singular top handle with a flap on the top, and you've got the little sort of Mew Mew logo acting as a lock as well. This bag style definitely do, does tend to feel a little bit more formal. Luar is a brand that is really gaining a lot of popularity, especially through their bags. And Again, their bags sort of fit into this category of very structured with a top handle. But the shape of the top handle paired with the rest of the bag and the colours and the sort of textures that it comes in does give it a bit more flexibility with styling or it just sort of comes across as a little bit more um, fun compared to its grown up versions that we've talked about. Again, down the more sort of traditional bag route, Bottega debuted a bag like this. Again, very simple, one top handle, with just a little gold bit of hardware clasping it all together. And also Louis Vuitton on their runway. They added um, a little bit of a pocket situation, but that general style is still very present. Florals, fringe and fuzz. Did I bundle all these three together because they sound quite good together? Yes, triple F. Florals, especially very realistic or 3D florals, are very big for Spring Summer 2023 spearheaded by Loewe. So in their bags, they've literally got this anthurium flower. Will I ever pronounce it right? Poking out of the bag or almost like a bag charm. I don't know if these will be detachable, but that's one way that we're seeing it. Also Loewe did just do the typical sort of printing floral prints on the puzzle bag and the flamenco bag. Prada added these leather rose details to crumpled totes. And then you've also got a bit of more of a loose interpretation via Molly Goddard, who has done these ruffle totes that look like, you know, the leaves of hydrangeas. Have I picked the right flower? Moving on to fringe. Now I'm not the biggest fan of fringe. I find it annoying to say the least just the logistics side of it right but Versace was doing this via these sort of very large fringe bag charms that accompanied the bags down the runway Hermes even did this by way of feathers and also again they have these sort of like attachments onto bags that were these sort of these fringe like feather details Victoria Beckham has a range of clutches that look like curtain tassels sewn together, I think they actually might be, into a massive clutch. 
how do you even find the opening in there? You'll be rifling through that, trying to figure out where exactly this bag opens. Would it be quite a, a tactile little treat? Yes, I'm sure that I would enjoy just sort of, you know, running my hands through that as I'm having lunch with somebody. But um, the whole, but everything else about this isn't for me. What could be hiding in there? Lord knows what could be hiding amongst the tassels. Dries van Noten also did these little handheld uh, clutches with what looks like um, the girl from the rings extensions added onto the bottom, dragging on the floor. Okay, I'm being a little bit mean, but as you can tell, the fringe isn't for me. But if you if you love a little the ring extension just dragging on that you do you you live your life all right don't let me stop you and then in terms of fluff the final f kate uh, came through with these again clutches we're loving a clutch another underlying trend of this right um red faux fur looking little fluffy clutches to hold on to friend number three hard exterior we are seeing a lot of these sort of minodier hard usually in terms of clutches but i'll show you some examples that aren't clutchy coming through from lots of different brands this isn't exactly something that is new but we're definitely seeing it a lot more a brand that's been doing this for a while is simone rocha with her pearl bag she's doing it again this season but a little bit more embellished like a little fabergé egg situation also taking a leaf from the egg book ferragamo with this sort of patent looking egg with a tassel tail so this bag is really two trends, one egg. These bags do tend to be a little bit more eventy or eveningy. Acne Studios did these sort of very rigid little box bags with like bows um, embossed into them. Chanel is doing mini quilted like little Chanel blimps. I don't know what else that could be. That's like a tiny little blimp, isn't it? Valentino is even doing just a singular rock stud as a little hard shell minodier slash clutch. Even if you look at Louis Vuitton with their exaggerated locks as bags, but also the Louis Vuitton side trunk, which has that sort of hard exterior um, illusion of the sides of the trunk giving that structure to the rest of the bag. Utilitarian slash pockets. Now this is a trend that has been floating around for a few years. We're very used to utility. Shout out to Lara Croft. Definitely a focus much more on pockets this season. So you will see bags with lots of entry, different entry points. The entire Fendi 25th anniversary of the Baguette show was pocket central. You were getting um, Fendi, sunshine totes with a pocket for a baguette on the front they had a silk looking baguette that had five little baguette pockets on the front of it Hermes is even dipping their toe into this trend with this sort of very boring shaped bag this bag does absolutely nothing for me but once again if this tickles your fancy um one less competition from me but again in integrating those little zip pockets into uh, the face of the bag. Should we call it the face? I'm gonna call it the face of the bag. Miu Miu also has a shoulder bag that has pockets sort of on the strap, on the bag itself. BBE, big bag energy. We are not new to hearing about this, right? We know that this has been coming. Some more examples of big bags gracing the runway for 2023. And other ways that you might see this interpreted, Ferragamo, these sort of big crossbody totes with leather cutouts. Also, they had these sort of weekender duffel bags carried as normal bags. Sportmax had this huge nylon, like, puffy bag that looked like I may want to live in it. It looked that cosy. Givenchy definitely did this a bit more in a grunge way. So there were sort of shoulder bag worn big bags with these buckles on the corners and these sort of worn in looking tones. But also another way to interpret BBE is not only in size, but in size of detail. So obviously we've seen this with Louis Vuitton and their details and all of that. But if we look at a brand like Valentino, I'm not sure the name of this bag, but the, but the closure on the bag is huge. So I'm going to also put that into this category, sort of exaggeration. High shine. You know this is my favourite. Sparkle sequins, metallics, high shine, pops of hardware, all of that. And again, 
I've given you examples of this in the past, but some other ones. JW Anderson's bumper bag, again, very popular bag, more on the reasonable end of a price point entirely crystal embellished or also studded against suede. That's very nice. Valentino bags, half of them down the runway were smatted in whatever embellishments you could think of. Little tassels, little mirrors, um, sequins galore, all of that. And I actually liked the fact that not only were these done in high impact colours or like jewel tones, but also in like a brown. So you have that sort of like a little bit more of a low key vibe for a sequined bag. Tom Ford is doing this through Rich Metallics. And another JW Anderson example is um, these little bags that he's done that are sort of very patent silver, ooh, molten liquid, just silveriness. <laughs> the pillow trend. For sleepy princesses who would like to have a little snooze whenever that may be convenient. Should you need a pillow with you at all times, the designers have said I've got you. And we've seen this already start to come through with Bottega Veneta this season doing their pillow clutches which look exactly as you may expect. And as well for this season Loewe has launched the like puffy Goya bag as well very sort of juicy and you want to do that to it. Jacquemus has also taken the very popular Le Bambino bag and puffed it up. She's a puffy little goddess. Very similar to like the coach pillow tabby but also maybe an alternative to the Fendi baguette with the way that the straps are done. Mm, keep your eyes open for that one. Even Dior's bag for 2023, no idea what they're going to call it, they've taken the canage and done it in a puffy leather so it gives a little bit more of a slouchier look. And as a bonus trend I'm going to throw in novelty. Lots of brands are doing these sort of weird and wonderful bags. Case in point, Chanel for their Cruise 2023 collection had a little, an, again, little hard shell Minaudier that was um, a little motorcycle helmet. Why not? JW Anderson has done a, a few bags with a dolphin print for the dolphin lovers out there or the marine biologists who also have a penchant for luxury bags. Gucci has this little sort of crossbody, entirely crystal encrusted bear, but also they used the little gremlin, is his name Gizmo? Why do I think his name is Gizmo? As a little bag charm. I am just waiting for Furbies to come back into fashion because my gosh, do I miss their annoyance in my life. Even more recently released, the Saint Laurent Happy Meal bag, as I'm deciding to call it, even though I think it's called like the, the, the takeaway, I don't know. It's a Happy Meal, okay? It's very novelty, especially for a brand like Saint Laurent. And to be honest with you, most of the bags in the Louis Vuitton show, a lot of those won't go into production, but those that do, there we go. Novelty vibe here, a massive lock, a massive key pouch, a ginormous coussin bag. And they also have a bag that looks like a house. Let me know which bag trends you're excited for in 2023. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. And in the words of my father, if you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.